By the end of this video, I hope you'll understand the answer to the following question. How does inflation affect net income when using FIFO or LIFO inventory cost flow assumptions? Let's just set up a scenario. Let's say on day one, we buy one gumball at a unit cost of $1. Day two, one gumball at a unit cost of $2. Day three, a gumball at a unit cost of $3. Then, on day four, let's draw a squiggly line here. Let's say we sell one gumball at $10. That's the selling price. We'll have to then figure out using our cost flow assumption what will be the unit cost of the gumball sold. Next on day five, one gum gumball was purchased at $4 per unit. If we were to draw a line through these points, you should see that the line indicates that the cost of the units are going up. The unit cost is getting higher each day. So this is an inflationary environment. This is inflation because as time progresses, the unit cost goes up, although it is starting to flatten out a little bit. Next, what we need to say is let's figure out what the cost of the goods sold are related to this $10 sale. So we have the $10 sale. We sold one unit $10. But what cost should we expense? Well, we don't know which gumball of these three gumballs the individual took. So what you do, we'll just assume that the first gumball that came in was the first out. So this is kind of how I see it. You just start here and you say, I have to go all the way back to the very first gumball that came in that we still have a cost for, hasn't been expensed yet, and therefore this becomes the FIFO cost of goods sold, which will be one dollar. Creating a margin of nine dollars. What that also means is that these items here, here, and here, if we're preparing this at the end of the uh, month, this $2 unit is still an ending inventory, this $3 unit is still an in ending inventory, and this $4 unit is still an in ending inventory. So let's write up ending inventory, and that's $2 plus $3 plus $4. So the total ending inventory is nine dollars. What you should see then, if you take the cost of goods sold and the ending inventory, if you added those two, uh, that would be ten dollars of goods that were available. So the cost of goods available for sale was actually ten dollars worth of cost because we had one, three, six, 10 if you add it all up. And that $10 of goods available for sale was either sold and therefore expensed $1 or is still an ending inventory. Now that we have that, I want to make a note. These are ending inventory for FIFO. Well, how does it work for LIFO? LIFO is a little different, so why don't we just change the color? Let's go here. Make it a blue. LIFO, once again, goes to the point of sale, but instead of going all the way back to the beginning, which would be the first cost in, we go to the most recent last cost in. So this is going to be the LIFO cost of goods sold. Therefore, the LIFO cost of goods sold would be a $3 cost of goods sold, because it's one unit at $3. The sales price is exactly the same $10, right? Because we said we sold it at $10. This number is exactly the same regardless of what the cost of the goods sold is. And therefore the margin winds up being $7. You see, whether you use FIFO or LIFO, it will impact the gross margin. Let's compute the ending inventory. If this here, the $3 unit was expense, then that leaves this one, this one, and this one as ending inventory for LIFO. 
It's these two that didn't get expensed when they went back to find the life of cost get sold. And it's also this other one that was purchased after the um, sell. If we add that all up, we get 1 plus 2 plus 4. So that winds up being 3 plus 4. That's $7. And you see that the cost of goods sold of three plus the seven dollars is ten dollars. In total, then, the cost of goods available was ten dollars. And that ten dollars is either still in ending inventory, seven dollars, or it was expensed. So let's bring this back together. You should see that in inflationary environments, the lowest cost gets expensed under FIFO, and therefore having a lower cost results in a higher gross margin and also will result in a higher net income and higher income taxes. It also means that the higher ending inventory cost will be stuck in ending inventory and that's what you see here. Ending inventory is higher because the lower costs were the ones that were expensed and the higher costs are the ones that get stuck in ending inventory. LIFO is exactly the opposite because you go to the point of sale and you take the most recent cost which will be the highest in an inflationary environment, it has a higher cost of goods sold and therefore a lower ending inventory. If you have a higher cost of goods sold, you'll have a lower gross margin, lower taxes, lower net income. Now if we were to do the same graph but have a deflationary environment going the opposite way, all these answers would be exactly opposite. I hope it helped. Aloha.